video we look at the basics around having a power unit and we use the new EcoFlow Delta 2 and the original EcoFlow Delta and we talk about which one would be best for you in your circumstances. There's backup power in your house, uh, used on a yacht, on a boat or outside in a, a shed, using off grid, using for camping in your camper van, motor room, caravan or whatever. But th this video is not just looking at these, it's actually going to look at which one and what capacity and the functions you will need or will best suit your needs within your environment you're going to use them in. There's a new EcoFlow power pack out and this is the baby EcoFlow Delta 2 and this is the original EcoFlow Delta and this is the new model and it's slightly bigger I think it's slightly wider and it's slightly higher I don't know if it's any longer but the difference in this is really significant from this every time um, some of the big companies bring out a new unit they've obviously been listening to people and this is the latest generation of the EcoFlow Delta and this has got considerably more capacity and functions than the original Delta and the Delta was a great unit there's nothing wrong with these if you've got one of these or they might be selling these off because they brought a new one these are still an ace product and do really well but this is like the next generation and has four more functions what i want to do in this video is not just talk about what you can run from it and the functions on it but go back to some of the basics i get a lot of questions of which power pack should i buy and i've reviewed many now most of the big ones and uh it's not a simple question to answer and you have to answer a number of questions yourself to enable you to understand what you're going to be running from it and which one would be best for you. And these are not cheap pieces of kit. Um, these are about a thousand pound or maybe just over a thousand pound at the time of recording. I would imagine these are going to be slightly cheaper now and they're going to be selling those off so you might get yourself a bargain with the original Delta. Um, so let's talk about what's inside these. So inside these you have something called an MPPT and that is a controller that enables you to take solar power and manage it in a format that will charge the battery inside this. It also inside this has a mains adapter so there's just a, a mains lead there's no charging block and you just plug like a kettle lead into the back of this which comes with it to charge the unit up. There's a big battery inside, or many batteries that are joined together to create a big battery. And there's also something called an inverter. And what an inverter does, through the use of diodes and capacitors and electronics, it turns the DC, the battery power that's in this unit, through a device to enable you to use it as AC, alternating current, to enable you to plug your 13 amp plugs into this. And obviously this is the European, the British version, there's the different one for Europe and there's a different one for America where these sockets are different. But basically this device converts the battery power inside it into basically mains power to enable you to use 13 amp plugs that you would normally use in your house to, char to charge things, to run things, to run kettles, toasters and various bits and pieces like that. To charge this there's a little flap on the back and there's the three pin kettle plug and this is the lead that comes with it and this just plugs into here and plugs into your mains at home or some mains power supply and puts power into this unit to charge it when it's charging from its main supply it's taking just over 600 watts in no wonder it charges so quick likewise there's this socket here and you can have a charger here from 12 volts this will take a considerable amount of time to charge this unit a lot more than it will charging it from this but this has a plug on that fits into there and if you buy the EcoFlow um, solar panels which I've got a massive one to show you I'll mention it in this video but I'll show it in another video that will also fit into this as well to enable you to charge it Something different with this one compared to the last one, it has this additional socket on the side. 
the original Delta didn't have this. And this socket on the side enables you to link this to other battery packs. So um, EcoFlow produce a battery pack that you can plug this into. And I think you can have two other battery packs linked to this to increase its capacity. So this basically um, is a just over a thousand watts of power and you can get another battery that links to this which is just over a thousand watts of power so you'll have two thousand watts or two kilowatts of power that you can run through this unit and if you buy the backup battery for this you're not buying all the gubbins that's in this because this would cost more to produce into a separate unit you're actually just buying another battery that will link into this and this unit will charge the other battery and take the power out of the other battery to double the capacity of this so these have both got lithium batteries in so this is a lithium iron battery and this has got a lithium phosphate battery in and the difference between them is that this is the new generation battery it's renowned to be safer although there's nothing wrong with this don't think this is a, a slagging off of this this is just the next evolution and the moving up within the credibility of the capacity of the things that this can actually do so the the difference between those batteries are the amount of cycles so when these are flat you charge it up and then you run them down you charge it up and run them down and that will probably do about 500 cycles this one will do 3000 cycles and what that actually means is after 3000 or 500 cycles you these are these still work it's just the capacity to store the power is reduced by 20 percent so this can be discharged and charged 3000 times which is significant it probably equates to about 10 years and it will not you lose any of its capacity until you get to about that 3000 cycles of discharging and charging and the batteries inside after a period of time str struggle to absorb all the power that they can absorb and it reduces but it only reduces to 80 percent this one being the old type of battery has less cycles but still absolutely fine and will discharge and charge for 500 cycles and still be usable to 80 percent of its capacity thinking ahead and where the evolution is going to go next we're getting to sort of the top of what these capacity um, battery capacities and the functions in them are and you'll see some variations there's some electronics in this that enables it to go over 2000 watts of power and it does that through a process of actually dropping the voltage inside and up in the amp so there's some computer gizmos in there that will alter the voltage but up the ampage inside which is a false reading but enables you to run things well over the thousand watts um, but let's talk about these in the general capacity side, just saying there are a thousand watts each and which one you want to buy. If you want to use something that takes 500 watts, so half of the capacity of this, and we're talking watt hours. So if you have a toaster and that's 500 watts, this would run it for two hours. And if it was 250 watts, it'd run it for four hours forgetting all the additional gizmos and everything else and that will do the same and we're talking about the mains power the three pin plug on the back if you're using some of these usb sockets or the cigarette lighter socket on the back it will run for a hell of a lot longer but this device on the front as well as this one when you plug your devices in it tells you how much wattage they're actually using and how long it'll last running that device so if you're thinking of buying a power unit and you don't know what, which one to buy, there's some things to consider. Is the capacity right for what you're going to use? The physical size of it and the weight of it, this is 12 kilograms, about the same as Rosie. Rosie? <laughs> um, what type of batteries in it? The modern, the better batteries are the um, lithium phosphate batteries. Um, what guarantee? This one unlike many on the market this one now comes with a five-year warranty which is excellent so if you're spending a thousand pound and it only had a year or two years warranty something could go wrong after that period anything can go wrong but having a five-year warranty on this is peace of mind so what sockets you need 
Do you need fast charge sockets? Do you need USB-C at 100 watts to charge computers? Do you need the old fashioned USBs? And how many main sockets do you need on the back? This one has four of the main sockets on the back and the plug at the bottom. Now, don't misunderstand this. These are not all capable of running a thousand watts at the same time you'd get 250 watts out of these proportionately so they just gives you the opportunity to plug more things in if you plug in something like a computer charger into this or a camera charger or a smaller device you'll still be able to use this to use more power but the capacity of this generally speaking without the additional electronics inside that enable it to boost up to more power is about a thousand watts there's the old cigarette like to sock it at the bottom and they all seem to all have these little barrel connectors on and you get this lead with it to connect to these and these are mainly for led lights and we don't tend to use those much in the uk but they are there and they are usable so the question is why would you want one why bother spending a thousand pound on one of these well you don't have to i mean my camper van has got a massive um lithium phosphate battery in and it's got a set of um, MPPT and a battery to battery charger and it's got solar on the roof it's got everything that's in this separately in the back of the van and individual units and those Victron units if they go faulty they're under guarantee as a separate unit I can take that separate unit out and send it back and get it done in the warranty or if it's out of warranty I only have to replace that part with this the full thing is one unit so if the charging unit goes in it or um, your socket or something goes wrong with this you're going to have to send this back but at least you know with this one it comes with a five-year warranty so within a camper van like this one in the back everything's set up more power than we actually need but this is just so adaptable to have as an additional backup in the camper van to plug things in and also we can use it into the house as well for backup power in the house so this will easily plug into the tv it'd run a kettle in the house and it'd run various other things in the cows house so if we had a power outage we'd be able to use this as a backup for some of the units but you still have to do those calculations about how many watts those actually items use to understand how long this will last so on your devices in your house your kettle your fridge your toaster your tv it'll say the wattage of usage and then you need to transpose that into a calculation to see how long this will run it for and again just to remind you working on a thousand watts if your device in the house is 250 watts it'll last for four hours and it's those calculations so i'll just quickly run through some of the stats for the new delta 2 so the capacity is 1024 watt hours um, the battery is a expandable battery unit so that's the socket on the side so you can put an extra battery on as four AC outputs um, at 1,800 watts total or a surge to 2,700 watts. The maximum device power with X boost is 200, sorry, 2,400 watts. So the 2,400 watts is where it drops the voltage slightly and ups the ampage. And that could have effect on some devices it, it, with it reducing the voltage it may make things run slightly slower but still give the power to enable that to work solar um, a pair of solar panels for fast charging will enable this to run um, fully charged for three to six hours this will allow um, with a maximum of one 400 watt hour um, portable solar panel or two 220 watt solar panels and this behind me here this big baby here is the 400 watt solar panel and what eco do which many other companies don't do is they actually make these waterproof which is a game changer if you're in the uk look at it out there we're up on top of the moor it's wet drizzly awful okay there's not much sun out today but if i wanted to put this on top of my camper van and go for a walk and then we suddenly have a shower on a sunny day as we do in the uk especially in yorkshire it might damage the solar panel but with this being 
waterproof i can leave it outside and i'm not bothered if it gets wet and the other good thing about this is if you have a yacht and you're looking to use one of these power packs on the yacht again you can have this on the deck or on on somewhere on the yacht where you're not worried about it getting wet game changer in relation to portable solar panels i don't know why all the companies don't make waterproof solar panels it gives you some stats in here as well, but there's lots of YouTube channels out there showing what you can run off it. It will power an iPhone at 11 watt hours and it will do that, charge your iPhone basically 89 times. Laptops of 60 watts, it will charge it 16 times. A light of 10 watts, it will run for 31 hours. It will run a, a Wi-Fi router of 10 watts for 31 hours. It'll run a fan of 40 watts for 30 hours. It'll run a car fridge freezer, 60 watts, for 16 to 32 hours. It'll run a TV of 110 watts for eight hours. A refrigerator at 120 watts, it'll run for seven to 14 hours. I suppose these vary because it depends how much you open and close the fridge door of how much the compressor needs to run. A coffee maker of 100 watts, it'll run for 0.8 hours. An electric grill of 1,150 1, watts, it'll run for 0.7 of an hour. So significant amount of power in a small unit. And these are the calculations you need to make to make sure you get the right one that's going to run the things you want it to run in your house or in your camper van, on your boat or wherever you're going to use it. Another common question is, can I just buy one of these and run my van off it? Well, I suppose technically you can. These units don't have a power takeoff like an RV takeoff, like some of the other bigger units do, where you can just actually plug a lead in, run it to a fuse box, and then run all your wiring in your camper van or your yacht off this unit. It doesn't have it, but you can use these with extension leads and of course you can use your mains lead on the back to an extension as well so we have a big power unit in the back and this socket here this three-way socket here is just basically an extension lead with a switch on to the power unit in the back so they can be used like that but you're probably better off having this as auxiliary power in your camper van and having the the individual units in your camper van and just using this as a reserve and as a backup or an alternative. Although what I would say is if you're car camping or you have a day van or you have a van that you take your e-bike out in and you want to charge your e-bike and might run a few lights and charge your laptop up when you go away and you might take a, an induction hob and a kettle, this would be ideal for that sort of circumstance. But if you're setting up a full camper van and you're going to spend some time in it, these are basically backup units for that type of setup. You can get much bigger units from lots of different companies that will do what you want to do in your camper van. But these are basically backup units, but very useful. Another consideration, I'll put the links to the website which gives all the dimensions, is where you're going to put it in your van or your boat. So this is quite a good shape because you've got your controls on this side there's an app that you can use all the functions on it and then your sockets are on the back there are some which had sockets on the side or charging units on the side i think the old one had the this charging unit on the side so you couldn't actually fit it into a space easily because you needed access to the side to charge it there are vents on the side here and there's fans inside this. I think there's three fans inside to keep it cool when it's charging or running at full capacity. So there needs to be allowed to be an airflow around it. So you can't squash it up to a wall like that and block the fans because you'll destroy the unit. So it needs an airflow around it, but this as a size and a shape with a flat top is easier to fit in many spaces within camper vans, boats and yachts. So I don't have an inverter in my van the inverter that's in this you can buy as a separate unit and link to your 12 volt system in back of your van and it'll take the, the power out the leisure battery convert it to mains power and then you'll be able to use it like this does so i use these type of units for my mains power keeping my 12 volt system completely separate but my 12 volt system's that big I can actually charge these from my 12 volt system to get me mains power if I need it. But the advantage of having these type of things and having mains power is uh, it's just like being at home. Switch your kettle on. So that kettle there, it's 
boiling enough water for two cups and it's using 720 um, watts of power but it won't take long to run and it says that it will run that for about an hour and obviously it's not going to take an hour to run that. Get the same type of information off this display onto the app as well and you can switch your AC and DC and your um, other sockets off and not on with this unit so you can put this in the garage of your camper van out of the way as long as it's got enough ventilation you won't hear the fans running and you can operate it by this and it also gives you an indication of how much power is going in as well and then on the settings there's endless amounts of settings you can change just about every function possible on this unit through this including turning off the annoying beep which I've done straight away. It took long to charge that. It's boiling away now, it's switched itself off. And on here, you'll see it's used 5% of its power to charge that. So that gives an indication of how many kettles for two cups of tea you could, you could boil. I use these sachets actually, instead of having a jar of coffee, and I have these, which is just enough for one cup. And your toffee, your coffee doesn't get damp in a jar really use I use these when I go camping in the tent but how easy is that it's just like being at home isn't it rather than putting the gas on and the thing with using electric products rather than gas is you do get some condensation from using this because you've got water vapor coming out of it but using gas and a gas cooker you actually get water vapor out bed in the gas and gas is more difficult to get hold of so i've still got my gas cooker in and i'll leave that in and there's a bottle in there and we have a spare bottle we can take with us but i also have power packs that i can use off this type of stuff because it's just easy likewise for toast and who don't like a slice of toast instead of having to get a, a toaster out or have a grill in your camper van just simply use an electric toaster so again that is running it's using about the same amount of power as the kettle, so it'll probably take another 5%, depending on how long it takes to run, of power out the unit. My toast is about done. So what quicker way to have a breakfast? And we have an induction hob, so we could have beans on toast, or we can cook anything on that hob, that take a pan. And we also have a air fryer. And the also a sandwich maker as well. And they'll all run off this unit. So it was at 95%, it's now at 92 So the toaster didn't use as much power as the kettle. Used the same amount of power, but not for as long. So when you talk about capacity having the back, backup batteries in, if you're running this for a, a thousand watts, it'll last for an hour. If you have another battery with it, it lasts for two hours and that's how the battery backup works it doesn't increase the capacity of the inverter in this it just creates an additional power as a reserve to run this now i'm going to have my toast and i'll get back to you in a minute i'll enjoy my toast and no the whippets didn't wake up so they didn't get any <laughs> i've just been reading on the information on the website for ecoflow and this new delta 2 is the fastest charging unit on the market. The Xtreme technology means the Delta II charges seven times faster than its competition. And what that relates to in time, at home, plugging it into a main socket, it'll charge from completely empty to 80% in 50 minutes. And it will charge from empty to 100% in 80 minutes which is pretty impressive. Now I've been having these type of power packs for some time and some of the original ones could take four to five hours to charge up. So the charging rate to get these charged up is excellent from mains power. And it takes about 600 watts from the actual house to charge it. Um, so another advantage for this unit and another step forward in the development of these units. So looking at how fast it charges, how much capacity it's got, how much it weighs, what's the physical size, what's the construction of it like, where's the sockets, where's the charging points, is it easy to fit in a van or into your boat, is it light enough to move about, so 12 kilograms is pretty good, does it have the capacity to charge what you need to charge it, 
that's something you need to look at all your devices that you want to run it on and the examples we've given you today hopefully will help you understand that it comes with a five year guarantee if you're spending over a grand or a thousand pound on one of these you want to make sure you've got it for at least five years and if you have any problems you know it's going to work latest battery recycling so the recycling charging um, rate, as we said, so 3,000 cycles from naught to fully charged before it drops to 80% capacity. And I don't think that's going to really change. We're about at the limit for lithium phosphate batteries. The next generation of things, if, if they go that way, are going to be super capacitors. And super capacitors enable power to go in really, really quickly, almost instantly. They hold the power and they can get rid of it quickly. But a supercapacitor is the combination of a traditional capacitor and some of the technology used in uh, lithium phosphate batteries. And combining those two technologies, it's very expensive at the moment, but once that's been mastered, I think you'll see that in cars and other devices and they'll certainly come up into power packs. But I think that's quite a few years away before that technology is usable. As I say, I will do another video about that fantastic and it really is that is a super impressive portable solar panel that solar panel is 400 watts fully waterproof and probably the best on the market you can get and when you've got something like this particularly when you're in the UK I mean we won't get any solar today with the weather out there as it is but particularly in the UK you need plenty of solar so that needs to be in good sunlight and giving enough power to charge this off grid to enable it to be efficient off grid but i'll do another video about them waterproof solar panels and how i'm going to use that not just on charging these units and how it charges this but also i'm going to use that as part of the setage i've got up on my cottage and how i would use that on my camper van as a temporary solar panel so on the van i've got 300 watts of solar on the roof or 350 watts of solar on the roof with that that will give me an additional 400 watts of solar and with it being waterproof i don't have to worry about if i put it up in a nice day and then it's going to start to rain i have to run back else it's going to get destroyed but we'll look at all that in another video one more thing about this is it does through charging many power units do through charging and what i mean by that is if you plug this in at home and you plug the mains lead in from your house socket into this it will keep it running and put the power through this to whatever you're taking out of it so if you basically put this in series with your fridge freezer so you plug this into your wall socket and you plug your fridge freezer into this this will take the power from your wall socket through this unit and out to your fridge freezer which is fine it won't use any power and it'll keep this topped up but if your fridge freezer goes off this will automatically switch over it takes a a couple of milliseconds switch over to use the power in the pack which will keep your freezer going so it'd be great for a freezer but if you have to use any equipment that you don't want an interruption with like medical equipment this is also got the devices in to enable that through charging to actually work the other thing about this is if this is plugged into a solar panel like the big one we've been talking about and you've got 400 watts of solar going into this and you're only using 400 watts of solar it won't affect the capacity of the battery it might you lose a little bit but you you'll be basically using the solar power outside through this unit all the links and everything you need to know will be in the description below if there is any discount codes or any additional information it will be in the description below and i'll pin it in a comment as well to enable you to find it easier if you do have any questions i'll do my best to answer them but also search through youtube because there will be hundreds of videos about these new units they are a, we've said it before and we say it time and time again but these are a game changer this is the next generation of what's coming along and ecoflow seem to be at the top of the game within the top three companies of this size of power unit Thanks again for watching, hope you've enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.